Gotta, gotta get in the mindset. Oh, what, do you want me to do the intro for you? Or, like, imitate <laughs> your voice? No. <laughs> That's... <laughs> no, you don't have to do that. What's up, y'all? It's Shuffle, and today I'm here with a Darkest Dungeon tier maker tier list, and I have a special guest with me today. Yeah, that's that's honestly pretty close. You know what? I'm gonna use that. Go ahead, introduce yourself, special guest. All right, it's uh Spartan, or the real Spartan. That's technically what my channel is named and everything. I'm oh. a Darkest Dungeon veteran, I guess you could say. And the last living Spartan thawed out of the the cryo freeze. Yeah, I'm the one Spartan that survived the movie 300. It was more like 299. I don't know. This I'm I'm being stupid. All right. So, we're going to do a tier list on on skills throughout DD1 because it's always fun to talk about that and Spartan's a very smart dude who's been around for a long time. Knows a lot more about the early days especially than I do. So, it'll be fun to see where we end up on this and uh, I guess we're just going with normal tier placements of like S through D and then unusable, but we'll see if anything qualifies as unusable. And of course, all of the skills are in order by class. We're going to skip Musketeer when we get down to there, but um, I think that's everything, unless I'm missing something. Nope, I think everything is good. Uh, are we using the Butcher's Circus tier list? So keep in mind that Stygian Embrace is hands from the abyss when we get to that. Yeah, so this because... this is. I was gonna say this is mostly because it's easier to have these distinctions that uh, Tatsu who made this shouts to Tatsu, but uh, she put all of the differentiations of like the class names on the specific skills, so that makes it easier to tell what the hell is what. All right, I guess we're starting with abomination. That's why there's a gigantic. A here, and I'll let you take first crack at this one. Well, obviously it has an A on it, so we're going to put this in A tier. Haha, <laughs> that was a joke. Uh, no, so what this skill actually does is, it's a free turn, essentially, but it gives you a buff and it locks you into abomination slash human moves, depending on what you're turning into. It is a heal, so if you're on death's door, you can use it as a heal if you still want to put out damage on the same turn in a tight situation. It gives you some Blight res, but that's mostly not important. The damage buff is kind of important because it can carry over to human form if you want that. But usually the Abominations, Abomination moves, are worse to build around than the human form because you don't want to apply stress to your human characters. Yeah, no, I totally agree. But um, also, doesn't Transformation give, like, speed or something like that too? Not that it's, like, super important because he's already fast, but... You know, it's, yeah, it's it something. Yeah, uh, a bit of speed. I think it's four points at max level, maybe five. Yeah, I think it's four. I could be wrong. No, I mean, I'm going to go with you on four, and if you're wrong, then I'm wrong, and everything's wrong on the first skill, but yeah. Uh, so where's this going? I mean, as as far as a buff and stuff goes, it's, it's not terrible. Like, you don't want to build around Beast Abomination, but at the same time, I feel like the... The buffs are pretty nice if you need to, you know, rage out and kill something in a couple turns. Well, yeah, if you desperately need damage to kill something, like maybe you got some really bad rolls and a thrall in the cove is going to explode on its next turn and you can't do much about it, then the extra damage and going into a rage or a slam is something you can do to kill it faster. I'd say this is a C tier, honestly, because... I mean, all the buffs are nice, but once again, it does lock you into uh, beast form for a bit. You know, I'm not quite sure where I was going to place it, but I feel like my gut reaction was to place it higher than that. I, I think, in terms of the numbers, I think the numbers are pretty nice, but I think in the the bigger context, like you were saying, where, you know, the skills that follow it are not the most desirable situation. I actually think I might agree with you, so I, I could start with a nice C tier. Yes, we, we'll consider this the reverse of the uh, the enemies you see in the sprawl in Darkest Dungeon 2, where instead of doing the better moves afterwards, you do the worst moves afterwards. Oh my god, that's such a, a good comparison. You know, and like, they get the... It, you know what? It almost is the same thing, because they get a little bit stronger, they heal, they get another turn immediately. Yeah. <laughs> 
It's like night, but Darkest Dungeon One's version. They were still working out the bugs in it. Yeah, I know. It took them two games and seven years, and then they got it. <sighs> All right, manacles. I mean, I don't. I don't think it's quite S because of the lowered stun chance. But this is like this is the move, right, for abomination. Yeah, this is. Well, obviously, it's like the first move you're ever going to. Well, I, actually, I. This point is moot because you're always going to be having it equipped because it's an abomination skill, but. I mean, it actually does pretty decent damage. Abomination has pretty high base damage, mostly because it's calculated around his beast form. And the minus 60% damage modifier puts it about on par with Stunning Blow. Now, the question is, are we going to take into account his supports with his trinkets on this? I, uh, I honestly don't want to because, you know, that opens up broken key and broken key is specifically you know what makes this pop off as hard as it does the transference padlock is you know good but you don't get accuracy and broken key just does everything so well that like it this this move becomes s tier with broken key i feel like but i don't think it's quite s without it but i might be wrong yeah, I can agree in that. It's just like saying all of Plague Doctor's moves move up a tier when you consider, oh yeah, you're always going to have Blasphemous Vile equipped. Yeah, true. So, I mean, I, I almost want to put in A though, just because you can hit rank 3, it's got some good on-hit damage, even if you got the lower yeah, sun say, chance. I'd say it is still an A tier, since most of the backliners do have a bit lower stun resist than the frontliners, and being able to hit like a Bone Cordier... On turn one, considering that sometimes Abomination gets a good speed roll and can hit him before they take a turn, it makes a difference. Yeah, for sure. I mean, A-Bomb's already fast enough, so it's like the prime target for Manacles is usually something he can contest the speed of and then also do some pretty good damage to it. So, yeah. I mean, you're not stunning Bone General, but you can stun everything else pretty well. So I guess A's good. Indeed. Uh, so... It's... Beast's Bile is next, and interestingly enough, this is one of the only two moves that your heroes get that actually has a positive crit modifier at base level, which is bizarre considering that basically all of them have negative modifiers. No but... way. Wait, really? I mean, I know, I know a lot of them have negatives, and I know that the, the hero's innate crit, you know, evens it out and stuff like that, but this is... Like, of all moves to have a positive base modifier, it's frickin' Beast Bile. Yeah, uh, it is Beast Bile and Bowler. Those are the only two AoE crits that have a positive multiplier, and I believe they are both 2% at base level. Which isn't much, but it is positive still. Oh but anyway, God. this is a Blight skill that cleaves 2 and 3. It does very low blight at the start, but it quickly ramps up. I think it's like two points at level one, and eventually goes to five at max level. I'm curious now. Yeah, it, it ramps like super quick for some reason. So like it starts off at two and then up to five very quickly, but... Yeah, there you go, crit mod 2% base. <laughs> I mean, maybe they changed some of these. Like, Manacle starts out at one. But, uh... Because there, there's one that immediately popped out in my head, and that was, like, Bleed Out. Because I remember Bleed Out having a stupid high modifier. I could be wrong on that, but... Yeah, okay, so it starts out at 6. But, um... Yeah. That's crazy. It's not too much better than the basic Wicked skills. I don't know. Bleed Out's one I came around on, but we'll have to go back to it. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll get to it later yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. So what about Beast Pile? I honestly don't like this move too much. Like, the only reason I press it is because sometimes I don't need to stun something. And I'm in human form, and I don't need Absolution, so... Yeah, the thing about Beast Pile is that the main benefit you get from it is the fact that Padlock of Transference, which you're probably using, also buffs Blight Chance. And it, it's weird, it has a debuff that weakens Blight Resist on them, so if you want to do a full Blight combo, maybe... But at the same time, if you're doing a full Blight combo, then you don't really need to be hitting specifically ranks 2 and 3. Like, 3 and 4 are much more susceptible in a Blight comp since you have Plague Doctor and maybe Grave Robber Darts to hit the back lines. 
Yeah, and if you get some DLC and stuff, you got access to Shieldbreaker. Ironically enough, or maybe not ironically, but I feel like one of the more funny things to do with Beast Pile is to get two abominations and then just like chain vomit on the same spots and you know, it dissolves quickly, but like, I don't know, I feel like that's it. There's not too much else going for this thing. Yeah, the it, I, this move just isn't that good. I don't know. Is it D? I don't know if it's D, man. Like it's it's still damage over time. Blades blades pretty good, and well, it ramps up pretty if, fast. If you need to stretch for positives, <laughs> since it does have a decent crit rate, you can fish for crits with it for maybe stress healing. And the abominations crit buff is plus twenty percent damage for the next effectively two turns. So. I guess you could, in theory, go for like a damage buff through Beast Spile critting, but that's that's a stretch. I'm sold. That's that's S to me. No, I'm kidding. It's probably like C. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, maybe, maybe it's still C. D, but it does need support. But it can be okay with support. All right. I guess going once, going twice. Are we leaving it in C? We'll leave it here unless we see something that's better that deserves the place. Ah, unless we see something, I see what you did there. Uh huh. Minus two. <laughs> oh my pips! <laughs> All right, so we got absolution. I I think this is a really good move personally, just because stress. At least to me, I've used stress as way more dangerous than like HP damage, and this heals a lot of stress pretty quickly, so that's nice. Um, and it's like pretty much your off turns when you're not stunning and spitting. Well, in Darkest Dungeon 1, stalling is king, and, uh, you know, Abomination's going first, meaning, well, not first, like, before most of the units that you have in your comp, most likely. And if you have, say, a dot in an enemy that's maybe slower, or you want someone else to get the kill, then he can just tap this button when he knows that an enemy has no health, and he gets a free heal. But anyway, this is like the inverse of Solemnity, and we all know how good Solemnity is. It's just got like reverse numbers on the stress healing and the HP healing. Yeah, I mean, Solemnity... Yeah, that's that's a similar conversation. But that move is also very good. Spoilers, but is this... I mean, is this S material? Like, on its own, if you just press it for one turn, it might not seem that good. But if you're stalling, like you were talking about before, then yeah, it's super efficient. I'd say this is an A tier ability. I don't think it's good enough to be S because the healing is a bit low. If you get hit by one stray blow, all your hearing healing goes, uh, you know, gets undone. You do get the stress healing, of course, though. Yeah, that's fair. I think I can, I can get down with that. So you leave it there, and then we have Rake, which is interesting. You know, it's a frontal AOE cleave, whatever you want to call it. it hits the front two dudes. And the more you use it, the more damage it picks up because it starts ramping. And so like you're talking about Beast Bile before where you get that crit and then you get that bonus damage from A-Bomb's you know, crit passive. And this thing really starts tearing up front lines like Shambler. But, you know, that's that's pretty much its like best scenario is something that can spawn either like minions repeatedly that you have to rake down or... I guess, anything that doesn't have a ton of prot? Uh, this is notably actually fairly good on the flesh if you get some good RNG and the weak ones appear in the front. Abomination is one of the highest DPS outputters against the flesh, potentially. But once again, you do need to get lucky. Of course, yeah, it is an AoE move, so it has that crit. And yeah, as you said, the crit gives the crit buffs, which does more damage. and. Yeah, Rake is... Well, the thing is, when you press Rake, you're kind of committed into saying, I want to hit Rake next turn, and I want to hit Rake next turn, and then I want to hit Rake the turn after that. There aren't too many fights where you want to do that, but they uh, they sure do exist. Yeah, pretty much. Like, it, it is a big commitment move. When you press it, you're going to be pressing for the next at least, like, two or three turns. And, you know, ideally the rest of the fight. But, yeah. I don't know. It's it's a it's a solid move, but I'm like feeling B for some reason. I don't know if that's like a spirit trying to talk to me. Well, that is because you will be taking stress every turn because of Abomination's beast form. So it does have a downside compared to something like say 
Q or, you know, a any other AoE that you want to spam out. Yeah, it's fair. I mean, I'm feeling B, but I don't know what you're feeling. Uh, I'd say B is a fair placement for this skill. I wouldn't run it in every fight or in every comp, but it does serviceable work for what it is. There's not enough drama in this video. I'm kidding. I, I would much rather find common ground quickly than sit here and, like, you know, bicker about stuff for, for 20 minutes. Oh, we'll get to Houndmaster eventually, don't worry. <laughs> All right. Um, rage. I feel like rage is a just solid ability. I, I feel like it's just another B to me. Like it, the the stats on it aren't amazing. Besides the fact it has some good reach, but it's really carried by abominations in a high damage stats. So that's what makes it really good to me. Yeah, rage is the wicked slice slash wicked hack slash crush slash smite of abominations. Just his basic. Deal full damage to said target. That's it. It does have some pretty decent crit, though. I think it... I may be playing too much Butcher's Circus, but doesn't it have, like, 11 crit at max level? Like, this move can potentially destroy things. Let's take a look. Yeah, you're right. 11 and a half. Holy crap. Wow. And 105 accuracy is not, not the best. I mean, people talk about Leper missing. Holy shit, dude. Look, it's 85. <laughs> I think that's basic uh, basic hit accuracy for most units. But no way. I think you're right, but I'm going to I'm going to pretend you're not until we get there cuz I don't want to be wrong. So, where are you putting rage? Rage. I mean, it's it's fine for what it is. I I would say it is B. Although, you know, C is probably what we mean by a completely average skill, which rage kind of is. It's just even the, with that the reach crit rate, is good, though? though. Yeah, I was gonna say the reach and that crit rate. You still, you still feel it. I mean, I'm, I, you know I can be on board be. with you. All right. I mean, yeah, I was pro probably low B, low B. Yeah. Okay. I'm not a fan of the the plus and minus on the tier list personally because you know just if you can drop someone in a plus or minus, you could have put it in a different tier already. Yeah, maybe. But then again, we're not going for like 15 tiers. Yeah, I know, it'd be just way way too many hairs to be split in technicalities. And it looks like final abomination move is Slam, which everyone, since the dawn of time, since the Earth was formed 4.5 billion years ago, has been wishing that this move could be usable out of rank 4. But it's not. I My, my issue with this move is not that it can't be used in rank 4. My issue is this has garbage accuracy on a move that is a, like, this move is primarily used for statuses, yeah? Like, it's got a minus dodge debuff, it's got a minus speed debuff, and it's got a knockback. And this has, like, less accuracy than a normal hit. Like, why, man? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I mean, honestly it, don't know. It, it does some <laughs> decent damage. It's only a minus 25% damage modifier, and you've just gotten the uh, transform buff, so plus 20 damage. But still, like, why? Ugh. And this is, if you're running Abomination in slot 3, specifically, like, you're using stuns and blights from that slot, and you transform because you need damage, you have to use this move. Like, this is a move that you use because you cannot use any other transformed abilities from slot 3. Like, Rage and Rake, front 2 only. Slam? No. You're using this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of this. This I I almost want to put this in in D. I already hear the YouTube comments going, but guys, the the minus speed is insane. It's like, I mean it is, but you know, that's that's all you got and you have to hit them with it and stuff like that. So, yeah, this is a D tier skill. Come on like, and if slam. It was, if this was not usable in slot 3, this would be unusable. Honestly, yes. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> all right. So that was Abomination only took like 15 20 minutes. <laughs> All right, see you guys in the next video. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> and these, these are gonna be long, so uh, let's see. Antiquarian is next, and it's kind of it's almost unfair to rate Antiquarian's like offensive skills in some like this because she's you know underpowered offensively on purpose, but her support skills are good, so. Yeah, you almost don't want to be using offensive skills, like, at all, 
in most situations. Like, maybe you want to be using some of them for maybe some supplemental damage, but really they aren't that great. <laughs> Wicked. Yeah. Now, what is this, nervous stab? Yeah, more like garbage stab. Yeah, I, I don't think anyone in their life has ever seriously run this at anything past a veteran mission. It... Like, the one thing this has is it can be used from any slot to hit up to the third rank, which is oddly high reach for a weak little... Uh, you know, just that's... looking at this skill makes me mad. <laughs> At least it doesn't make you nervous. I, I almost want to put it in D, though, just because of the reach. Reach is kind of nice. Like, you can chip in, you know, the four damage if you're running it, and it's not necessarily a bad thing, but... Yeah, it's probably D. Gotta go check... It has a use. Yes. Gotta go check Thick's video where he, like, solos the final boss with Anti. I'm sure it gets pressed a lot on that one. Nah, I'm pretty sure he only presses uh, the next move... <laughs> Uh, Festering, Festering Vapors, which is actually a pretty good skill, considering that Antiquarian is known to be a uh, garbage in combat. So yeah. it's like, it's like Beast Spile, except you can target anything with it from anywhere, but it only hits one. And that's about it. That is straight up what it is, which is, honestly, I think it makes it better than Beast Spile. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's like, I'm between B and A with it, because... You know, the, the extra reach is really nice, and damage over time is usually, at least for someone like Antiquarian, it's it's better than direct damage, so I, I think yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, base damage really doesn't matter when you, when you deal dots. Yeah, exactly, and I think it has, like, decent accuracy, too, if I remember, so pretty solid. Yeah, I think it... Doesn't it have a 115 or something at max level? I could be very wrong about this, but if I remembered, it was something really good. Yeah, it is 115. Jeez, Louise. That's accurate. Yeah, I've been, I've been playing Darkest Dungeon for like eight years. I, you'd think some of this would stick. <laughs> now, there's, there's so many numbers and random, random things out there, it's hard to keep track of everything. I mean, that accuracy might bump it to A, at least for me, just because reach and consistency. Yeah, you don't want to be running accuracy combat, like, combat trinkets on antiquarian so you know you don't it saves you some space you run dodge on her you run speed on her so she can guard faster and uh, this may bump it to a for me but the academic study hall does give her an extra 15 percent blight chance and debuff chance for the debuff it has so it just makes the skill even better all right sold thank you districts also it's called the academic study really uh, it could be. I don't quite recall. I was curious, just because, you know, that's what that's what they are in Darkest Dungeon 2. Yep, Control-F, Academic. Oh yeah, it'll be at the bottom. No! Oh. Does it even say it in this thing? It might. It'd be like a district somewhere. Equipment. Ath oh, Athenium. the Athenium. Oh man. Alright. What could have been No foreshadowing here. There's not. Chris didn't think that far ahead, apparently. Ah, <sighs> lame. Alright, so we got we got get down. I can't remember what this does in base game. It but, moves uh, you backwards and buffs your blight chance. The hell? Mmm. You get some speed and dodge, but like. She's already got dodge and stuff. I guess. I mean, as a movement skill, it's one of the few skills that goes backwards. So I guess it's good for that, but it's not, it's not something you slot on and plan around, I feel like. Oh, but this is exactly how Thick won many of his fights, just giving Antiquarian massive dodge and blight chance enough to slay gods. But yeah, if you're not a, a literal god at the game, you probably won't be uh, using this all too much. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's weird because... Like, part of me wants to raid a low because it's not commonly used, but there's nothing inherently wrong with it. So it's like, I don't feel, I don't feel like it's fair rating it super low. It is a back two, so you can use it for uh, maybe dance comps. Probably not the best for it, but 
I, I kind of wish it was the Butcher's Circus variant where you got stealth for a, a yeah, bit. Yeah, that was so good. Instead, we're here, so... I, I can't make up my mind on this, but... What are you feeling? I'm saying this is a C-tier move. Like, it only has synergy with one of her moves, really. That move is a good move, but... Yeah. Okay. I mean, I can get down with that. Uh, Flash Powder. I, I personally think this is at least... At least A. I want to put in it put it in S. I, I feel like Flash Powder is amazing. I want to put Flash Powder in S? Like, I know I've heard many times the debate between Flash Powder versus Emboldening Vapors, or whatever the one he has. Invigorating Vapors. So, yeah, this removes Stealth, which doesn't come into play much, and it has a accuracy debuff for a bit. But it's only for two rounds, so it's less effective than others and also she does need to pass a check for a debuff resist she does and the things that i would say in response because every time i bring up resist people always came back at me with this and that is debuff resist is inherently one of the lowest across like all the enemy stats so it is still fairly consistent and for my own personal input with Anti, even if you're not, you know, her, a lot of her abilities are usually better to be spammed. So if you're going to use Flash Powder, then you're going to be hitting it every single turn anyway. So you're keeping stuff at like minus 30, minus 45 accuracy later on. And this can shut down some things, I feel like. Yeah, so while that is true, you need to keep in mind that it has to compete with Invigorating Vapors, which is... It, it does a very similar thing, at least in the late levels. The only difference is you are protecting your team... Well, you're protecting your team from all enemies, not just specifically one enemy. And while it is five effective less dodge, the uh, range that it protects you from the enemy team is... Most people consider it a lot better. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to say Invigorating's bad. Like, I... They're, to me, they're similar, because they're similar and different, which, I don't know, that's some centrism crap right there, but they, they both try to protect stuff by mitigating accuracy and stuff like that, but I feel that they, they do it in like different ways. When you use flash powder, it's like, I'm telling this thing not to hit us, you know, and sometimes it's just like a boss, you know, it's a one... It's one thing you're fighting, so the accuracy and how fast it ramps up can be good. And Vapors is better when it's like still four on four. And Vapors, you know, gets better later. But I don't know. Like I, I really like this move. This is one that I came around on. And I think I still think it's good. You know, you don't have to agree with me on S or A for that matter, but I am curious what you're thinking about it. Well, I won't deny that Flash Powder is obviously better in the early levels, where it's a minus 10 accuracy. It's sad that it only goes up to 15, which is only, like, half its power at max level. But one thing you said is that you like Flash Powder more against bosses. However, the thing to take note of is that a lot of bosses get more than one turn, so that debuff ticks down a lot faster. So you're going to be effectively getting, you know, less stacks of it on something where... Obviously, Invigorating gives you more time to keep the buff around since it's on your turns. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, if you want to keep comparing the two of them, then yes. But, you know... That, that is unfortunately the comparison that we have to make since these moves are both vi vying for the press this button every turn for this character. Alright, so with that in mind, place the skill. I would say B. Yep. Strike me down, nail me to a cross, but that is my, uh, my opinion on this move. Alright, in the comments y'all get to decide who's right, me or Spartan. I'll put it in B for now. Should it be A? Should it be S? Should it be double S? I think so. But... We had to delete the OP tier before we started this <laughs> video. We did. Alright. I mean, we both at least understand it's not, you know, trash tier, so that's good enough. This is not bad, yeah. Uh, let's see. Then we got the, the heel 
vapors, which are... This was called Rejuvenating in Butcher's Circus, but it's probably changed its name again. It's fortifying. fortifying. There's too many moves in this game that have vapors in their name. Yeah, she vapes, dude. I mean, so does the Plague Doctor. Oh my god. That's what they're doing in the Athenium, dude! Yeah, and the Occultist, he's got that... He's got those scented candles, if you know what I mean. That's where the dark strength comes from. Whoa! Right. <laughs> yeah, this is this is a the smallest heal in the game, basically, and it buffs bleed and blight resist. It's kind of like the reverse plague doctor when you think about it, because instead of removing, you're preventing. And so she does get her turn. Yeah, she does get her turn before most of your allies if you're running like a her supposed trinkets. Like, I believe her crimson court set gives her enough speed to outspeed most of your other units. Yeah, it's and like you four speed. With it. Right. Yeah, it, I, it I don't think too highly of this. Like, you know, get you off Death Door. And the Bleed and Blight thing can kind of protect you from, like, follow-ups. But the scaling on it is so bad. Yeah, I know people who do not upgrade uh, Battlefield Medicine for the exact same reason. It just doesn't do much. And yeah. I mean, five extra resistance points from rank one to rank five... It's that, that's nothing. Yeah, I mean, I can. It it's not unusable because it gets you off a death door, and any extra source of healing is just good for that. But I mean, I don't see this being higher than C. If that, uh, antiquarian is fast, so you can stall with it for a little extra healing. But yeah, this this does not deserve a spot higher than C. I could say D, but I'm feeling generous on this skill because. It has its uses. Sometimes it'll deflect a lucky bleed, and you get some value. But usually you're trying to prevent the damage entirely. That's fair. Josephine, thank you. Alright, now now we got Invigorating Vapors. Are we flipped? Are you going to tell me that this is S? Now, this move... This move is great. Like, the, that's the thing about dodge in Darkest Dungeon 1, which is kind of weird, that... The more dodge you have, the better it gets. And Antiquarian has, and for will forever be, uh, the centerpiece towards the dodge comp in this game. Like, yeah, use this three times and nothing's gonna hit you. Like, yeah. I'm, I, I don't use Antiquarian a whole bunch in combat, obviously. But I still do think this is, like, her S-tier skill. This is, like, what makes Antiquarian Antiquarian. Yeah, I mean, it, it is good, and in terms of dodge, what's interesting is in a lot of other RPG games, usually there's some kind of, like, diminishing return factor when you start stacking stuff, but dodge just gets better. The more of it you have, the better it becomes, and that's, it's interesting in that way. I mean, I, I do think it's either S or A still, just because, especially, like, level 5, like, level 1 and 2, it's not amazing, but when it hits, like, 3, 4, and 5, it really starts to pop off, and uh, it keeps you keeps you pretty safe, so... Yeah, it, it, it scales crazy. It goes from 12 effective dodge to 20 to 28, and then over the next two levels, it goes up to 40 dodge. 40, not 30? Jeez Louise. Yeah, because it hits four units. Oh, I see. That's how you're calculating it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, three for each. One hit for each. Right, I, I can understand if you want to put it in A, because it doesn't progress the fight, but at the same time, you know. The thing is that in Darkest Dungeon 1, there are very few skills that hit you regardless of how much dodge you have. There is this thing from the stars' is like start of round stress to everyone attack. There is Wolf's Bombs. And I, I honestly can't think of another one on the top of my head right now. Um, I think there's a, a spoiler attack you can't dodge, but yeah. Oh yeah, there's that one as well. But that, that's such a you know, specific circumstance. Uh, that happens w like twice maximum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Here's what I'm going to do. I'll leave it an S if I can move up Flash Powder. I'm kidding. I'm not doing that. I'm not that petty. All right. <laughs> Protect me. I can, I can say I got the Flash Powder call. So if you want to call 
uh, invigorating to go to A. I, I will accept it. No, no, it's fine. It, it is good. <laughs> All right. Protect Me um, is, is interesting. It's got some, some fun uses, you know, because you make someone else guard her, which can, can do a lot of things that you may not readily think to do because you go, oh, I just, you know, drop it on Man at Arms and, you know, he, he protects me or whatever. But, you know, you can throw it on your repost users to force them to get more repost hits out. If you want to run Antiquarian up front, because sometimes you're doing something stupid like playing Blood Moon and, you know, Nuzlocke or something like that, and sometimes Antiquarian has to go into rank one. How does she survive up there? She's just protect me on, like, Flagellant rank two. Yeah, this this is great mitigation, like, considering that not only does it give protection, which is a fairly good stat, you can stack it on whoever has a protection trinket, but it also gives dodge, so if you want to try and dodge tank with it, that also works. Like, you can dodge tank Jester, like, Ancestors Coat Jester, Protect Me level 5, he already goes up to 38 dodge, which is, like, really good. Yeah, and then you solo and nothing's hitting you. It's good. But yeah, um, um, I, th I think we both know. We saw the video. I'm, in fact, I sent it to you, the, uh, <laughs> yeah, where I used Antiquarian and Highwaymen in a champion medium cove mission and uh, beat it fairly easily. That's right, well, that not was... fairly easily. I got to death's door a few times, but yeah. That was my, my introduction to Spartan. I got sent a, a video for the viewer run series where he decimated the cove with two characters. That's right. Yeah, I used a level 5 Antiquarian. All right, um... I think the the battle limit use keeps us out of S for me, but I can definitely see like B or A. Yeah, on that run that I did, it did run out of uses when I spammed it. And also, if you're using this for a fast character like Highwayman, and let's say for instance, Antiquarian goes first on round one. Guards well, forces guard on Highwayman. Highwayman then gets his turn. Next round, if Highwayman goes before Antiquarian, well, after he takes his turn, the guard wears off because it's based on how many turns the guard E has taken, which can leave you at a very inconvenient standing. True. All right, where do you rate this it? It's very situational, but it does happen. It does. You, you have to be aware of that. That's, that's part of the reason why, you know, dumbasses like me think Houndmaster's guard lasts one turn because of, you know, speed values and how it takes down and stuff. So be aware. Well, that's because Houndmaster's guard does last one turn. What? Don't do this to me. Yeah. Houndmaster's guard lasts one turn less than the man at arms' guard, and, uh, yeah. A one turn less, sure, but it, it lasts two, right? Like, I'm getting sidetracked. I need well, to After now. he takes his next turn, it's over. Because... Yeah, okay, so that, yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, we gotta rate this. This is probably a B tier skill. It's good, but it doesn't. It, it doesn't really carry. I think the carrying is on whatever unit you guard. True, it's only as good as the person it hits. Alright, well that's two characters, and now we're into Arbalest, who is uh, a character who's becoming, who became one of my favorites near the end of my DD1 time before DD2 came out. So, I guess we can start with Sniper Shot. Ah, uh, Sniper Shot. The bread and butter skill. This is a very odd skill, considering that it isn't that great at the early ranks, but it just ramps up so hard. Like, if you look at her damage at level 1, you can see it on the the uh, thing. It's 4 to 8. So you only get a 50% damage modifier, meaning at level 1, this can high roll, not crit, but high roll for 12 points. But at level 5, it goes up to... 28 because it gets a 100% damage modifier instead of just 50 and it's just got super high crit as well versus marked yeah it's got a lot of crit then he gets the bonus crit and then arb has pretty good crit herself baseline so you can get her up to like 40 maybe 50 depending on some other stuff um yeah she's already got 32 with no trinkets on and no yeah. quirks at max level against marked yeah, that's nuts. And uh, something that's interesting with her too is since her crit buff is bonus damage against Mark, this is a really, it, it kind of gives itself like a feedback loop. So, you know, it crits, you get the bonus damage on Marked, and then you just hit the next thing, the next sniper shot for like 50 something. That's uh, it's pretty crazy. 
Yeah, the only damage, the only downside is that it relies on Mark, and while Mark isn't that bad of a mechanic on its own, usually when you need to deal that much damage to something, it's probably a boss, and as I stated before, bosses get multiple turns, so Mark is a bit less effective. But for what it is, Sniper Shot is still a good hit. It's got high accuracy, so it pretty much never misses. Yeah. I, I say this is probably high B. Low A, maybe. What do you think? Um, I know you can't see my, my face, but like I'm I'm like shaking my head side to side because I'm trying to you know, I'm pondering it, so you know, I'm like A, B, both of those are are pretty good. I I almost I almost want to put well, it let's in agree a. one thing. This is the best gate like this is the best payoff for a mark that there is in Darkest Dungeon. It's better than Collect Bounty, it's better than Hound's Rush. Are those the only two? Well, there's pistol shot and, and Throne Dagger. Does Throne yeah, does Throne Dagger get the buff in base game? I don't remember. I think so, but it's it's kind of negligible for those two. Yeah. It's not bad, and but it's not great. Doesn't Captivate as well, or am I thinking Butcher's Circus? No, I think Captivate too, actually. And then you get the, the Fang Spear and get the bonus. Ah, uh, yeah, the one of the worst trinkets in the game. Yeah. Um, I want to drop in A just because of the scaling, because that, that is a lot of damage later. Yeah, I can see this being an A-tier ability. All right. You know, if we, if we have any second thoughts in an hour or something like that, we can just go back and mess with it, but... Moving on, suppressing fire. This is another thing that lasts like two turns, I think. But um, yeah, this is this is flash powder, but it does more than flash powder, kind of. But Arbalist has not as much support for it, and it only hits the back lines. But it does hit the back too. Yeah, and the other thing too with Arbalest, unlike an Aquarian, an Aquarian can get very fast, so she can get flash powder out before something does anything. But suppressing fire is usually coming out after the two back enemies have gone. But with that said, these debuffs are massive because that minus 15% crit, then up to like 19. Most things, I think, outside of Blood Moon lose the ability to even crit you at that point because yeah. it's so heavy. I, I think the most crit that an enemy has on, like a, a basic enemy does have on a champion level is like, the pelagic groupers maybe with 23 crit i mean they're frontline units sometimes but yeah you know that being able to take away the ability to crit at all and removing accuracy is just pretty good it's a nice insurance move but yeah it does suffer from the fact that arbalist is slow so those units are going to be going before you are almost certainly yeah i mean with that said you know it's got a lot of upsides but it's not too oppressive either, and it's not something, like, you hit it a couple times, and I've tried to build around it, but I haven't had, like, you know, incredible success. It feels a bit, you know, clunky, but other than, than all that, it's, I feel like it's a good move, so I want to put it in B. I don't think it's, like, S or A, and it's, I don't think it's lower than B, but, you know, those are my thoughts. I think it's good. I just think there are usually skills that you'd rather use with Antiquarian. I mean, we've already sung the praises of Sniper Shot. Usually, when you're running Antiquarian... No, not Antiquarian. Oh, Arbalist. When you're running Arbalist, you are running some form of synergy to apply Mark and then kill something very quickly. What's better than making an enemy not likely to hit you? Making them not be able to hit you at all by straight up killing them before they take an action. And since Arbalist is the slowest mark based unit there is it's almost certain you're going to get a mark off on something before her turn happens so it does have to compete with sniper shot in that regard i i think it's a passable skill but i don't think it's i i don't think it's a spectacular a tier skill i'm i'm thinking c tier for this okay i will i'll drop it here and then as always if we have any second thoughts we can come back with it and then we come to a move that i have a personal hatred for and that's Ugh. that's sniper's mark, and the way the way I approach this is like every other mark in the game. So I think Volnhex and uh, Mark for Death and Target Whistle can hit anything from anywhere, but for some reason Sniper's mark cannot. 
So the spot that Arbalest has the most trouble hitting is rank one, and she can't even mark that to basically give her damage to someone else. So it just doesn't... I, I, I never press this move, honestly. Like, I know people out there are going to be saying, oh, in the early weeks of, you know, your first DD1, or your, the start of your DD1 playthrough, when, you know, it's like week four and you don't have any accuracy trinkets and stuff like that, then, yeah, it's good to get rid of some dodge. But, you know, after that, are you pressing it? I'm not. The thing I don't <laughs> like about this is that... Okay, so everyone knows that the best marks in the game remove protection, so you can melt a high protection move. This removing dodge is confusing because usually Arbalist, ha she has the best uh, mark payoff in the game in Sniper Shot, so you usually don't want to be setting up other units for this. But if she's setting up herself, that doesn't make too much sense because Sniper Shot already has really high accuracy in, like, 115 at max rank. She doesn't need to give targets minus 20 dodge. And if you're trying to hit something super dodgy like, say, a Crone or a Virago, those already have, like, 130% debuff resist, so you're not sticking this debuff on them. Like, a cultist mark gets a pass because he has a ton of debuff support. Like, he can debuff anything with the right trinkets. Arbalist doesn't. Like, you can run the wrathful bandana and maybe stick a debuff, but it's it's not the, the best way to... It's, it's not the best way to run a... No, I agree. So, I uh, <laughs> I want to put it in unusable, but I know I'm going to get angry comments, so I want to say D. You know, honestly, I would not argue if you put it in unusable, but D is also serviceable. Because this... I, I, I don't think I have hit this button in, like, maybe two to three hundred hours of playing this game. All right, I'm going to put it there. Right, condemned for the crime of being a terrible mark. Yes. All right, and then we got Bola, which, like, could almost be a good move. The Butcher's Circus Bola is pretty good. Oh, but, Butcher's uh... Circus Bola enrages <laughs> me so much by how good it is. <laughs> like, they took every single weakness that the Arbalist has, basically, which is her positioning... And the fact that she cannot do anything from the front ranks and she can't do anything to like move backwards and get value. And then they just dropped Bowler so that you can use it from the front and it moves her backwards. And it. Oh, it enrages me so. Yeah, dude, people, people out there go, oh, I hate Butcher Circus because I get screamed at by Man at Arms. Like, dude, I hate Butcher Circus because of Arbalest. She's so good. It's tilting. I yeah, this is the other only move in the game that has a positive crit modifier at base. And Arbalist's base crit modifier is... something. It's not bad. You could get some crits with it. Honestly, the knockback... I feel like if the knockback was a bit higher chance, then this would be a somewhat decent move to disrupt the enemy. Like, if you hit a basic bleeding cultist, because they're, they're not too fast, there is a chance that with the right trinkets, maybe, say, Prophet's Eye then you'd be able to uh yeah let me just uh wait a bit for you to get to the oh no you, you can you can keep talking i'm i'm just uh finding it while you're uh while you're going so yeah so this guy only has 65 move res and as we all know if you get this guy to rank three he has to stumbling scratch which is a very weak move so yeah just with like prophet's eye and if it had a bit more move chance, you could, like, consistently uh, take out turns from this dude and other units that can't do anything aside from attack in the back lines and move forwards. It would get a bit more value. But unfortunately, we do not live in magical Christmas land where all skills are fantastic. I know. The, the thing that really jumps out about this, you know, not the, the fact that it doesn't do, like, the Butcher Circus stuff or moves her backwards and all that, it's just this knockback is so low. Like, I don't know why it's not 120, 140, something like that. Because most of the frontliners, I mean, Cultist Brawler is being generous. A lot of the frontliners, you know, either start at this move resist or they get way higher than that. Like, if you, like, you're not pushing a ghoul with, um, with that. Not that you really need to push ghoul, but, you know, just as an example. Like, this move doesn't really knock anything back. And between Arbalest's uh, lower end 
base damage and that huge damage cut and the prot that a lot of frontliners have. Like, this hits for nothing. So I, I personally, I don't like this move too much. Yeah, th this move can fail to move something with zero move res at the early ranks. Just, just yeah. let that sink in. <laughs> Got a 25% chance to fail at level zero. Wait, is the wiki right here? Does it not gain extra knockback from levels four to five? Oh my I god. I feel like that's wrong, but... I hope it's wrong, man. I hope it goes to like 115, because that... <sighs> the immortal words of the ancestor, that is a travesty. You know what? While, while we're doing this list, I'm going to boot up Darkest Dungeon right now and check for myself. <laughs> All but right. we can continue. That's but fine. yeah, this move is, is not that great. Alright, I'll drop it in D. Yeah, D tier. Uh, blind fire. It, it could have been good, but blind fire is not that good, I feel like. Yeah, blind fire, I mean, it does some decent damage, I guess. It's only got a minus 10 damage modifier. It just has such garbage accuracy on a unit that... Like, you're not putting an accuracy trinket on Arbalus just to use this move, are you? Probably not. I mean, you know, our whole thing is consistent shooting, and uh, I mean, it, it is called blind fire, but still, um, the speed the speed bonus is kind of nice. But like, are you gonna blind fire just so you have speed for, I guess, the rest of the the encounter? Doesn't seem uh, doesn't seem like the best use of your turn. But yeah, I mean, you can hit rank is... one. Uh, yeah, it is a way to hit rank one. And the thing is, well, something that's a bit confusing to me is it's a random target skill, which is... I don't think there's really any other random target skills in this game that you have, but... Well, aside from Musketeer, obviously, but... Usually, if you would have a random target skill, you'd want to use it first, since you're like, okay, I don't know who I want to kill first, I'm going to random target and then focus down whoever that hits. But no, Arbalist goes last, usually, so that's the opposite of what you want to be true. Yeah, the only thing I can think of that's random target is, I want to say Spectral Spear Tip, but that's a trinket, and yeah. that's only like 5%, it's not guaranteed. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this move's just not great. I want to put it in D unless I hear something compelling. Yep, I, I've got no argument for it. Also, I just checked, and no, the wiki is right. It does not, it like, it caps off at 105 uh, knockback on uh, Bolo. That was a Red Hook TM moment right there. <laughs> oh uh, my God. It's like, I, I don't know if people remembered it, but back in the day, for some reason, the maximum level of like any skill that gave a damage over time or a status effect or anything, it went from 130% at level 4 to 139% at level 5. It annoyed so many people. Yeah, why couldn't they just give it? I mean, it's all 140 now, right? If it yeah, does something like that. Yeah, it's all 140 like now, but it was 139 for the longest time. That's so troll. Uh, all right, so the bandage. I think the bandage is pretty good. It's not. It's not like the best heal, and but if you have like the medic's boots, then it can do pretty good. If you hit something repeatedly, then it heals for a lot. But I mean, do you need do you need that much single target healing on? I guess the same person. I feel like the bandage is the epitome of a move that you use when your team is full of off healers. Like, oh yeah, if I for have, sure. Yeah, if I have Leper and Abomination and Crusader, and I can buff up all their healing with a bandage, then yeah, this is a pretty good move. But on its own, it needs to pull a lot of weight. And a, a 4 to 5 at max rank does not pull a lot of weight without setup. Yeah, it doesn't. I mean, there's some cheeky stuff you can do, like... um. You could bandage, and then the fight ends, and you can eat food for, like, bonus healing, but, I mean, no one does that. I shouldn't say no one does that, but, I mean, that's such a a niche case that is, like, does that change that the tier a, placement? That is a minor optimization that only the most diehard of players think about doing. Yeah, true. Um, I don't know, like, it can... Uh, it doesn't even, like, quite get you out of range of a dot tick. That's what's so tilting about it. But... I mean, still a heal on, you know, a character that's not Vestal. So, I, like, I want to put it in maybe, like, C or B, but it's definitely not I guess it, it is something to do when you've only got rank 1 left to hit with her. Oh, yeah, that's... I mean, when I make stuff like my Arbalest guide, I talk about, like, the way I approach Arbalest is sniper shot for, like, two or three turns and then bandage the rest of the fight. 
it's, it's, it's very uh very understandable i'd i'd say this is uh, this is definitely a c or b move all right i'm going to be nice to it boom b is for bandage b is for all ballist true not musketeer all right rallying flare um this move ironically enough or strangely enough i guess the the worst part about it is the the stealth removal to me like all the other stuff is fine but you know using this as d stealth is um something i i personally don't value too much because arbalest is slow and by the time and the rest of your team is usually faster too so it's like the stealth enemy gets off an attack and then the end of the turn comes arbalest flares it they can also dodge it and then you know the stealth enemy might go before your other damage dealers you're not killing it before it gets off the second attack and drops out of stealth anyway and before anyone you know talks about oh yeah no one's gonna dodge this i have i have a really funny clip uh that i used for a video where i fought snakes in a hallway after the shield breaker nightmares and the two freaking vipers both dodged the flare <laughs> and so they stayed in stealth and it made me hate this move yeah, this is this is one of the wonkiest moves in the game. I I don't think I've ever seen a move before that does so much, but at the same time does so little. Like, clearing stuns is undeniably good, and she's the slowest, so most likely whatever enemy is going to try and stun you is going to be going before her, so she gets to... Like, like say, Bone General. Bone General AoE stuns hits, like, maybe your Plague Doctor or some fragile unit in the front. And you can just remove that. Uh, clearing Mark is surprisingly irrelevant most of the time. Sure, it, it can be nice to have. It decimates the... Well, one of the bosses in the... Uh, actually, well, I'll well, not say Swine King is spoiled or anything. So yeah, it just destroys Swine King. Removes the Marks. The Torch adding is... Something? I guess? It's not bad. I mean, you know, you hit this... I mean, how much how much gold is a torch? I forget, like 50, 75? I think a gold is like, a, a torch is like 75 gold, yeah. yeah so, so you get like one, not even one third of a torch for using this. Yeah, well, you know, you're level five, you hit this three, four times, that, that's 75 gold in your pocket. Yeah, and, and you have a chance to remove some stress from everyone. It's like a weaker version of a hound's cry. Yeah, this... It what what's weird about this move is that you don't need all of these effects at the same time. You're not gonna have someone stunned and marked and be low torch and stressed out and have stealth enemies that you need to flare all at once. So it's like, you know, if, if this gets two of the effects, or I guess three technically, because you're always gonna get the torch and hopefully the stress. So it's like if it gets anything else, if it can remove stealth, if it can clear stun, if it can clear mark. Then oh, it's okay. Shuffle, you've obviously never heard of the time when you can get ambushed in pitch black by shield breaker snakes and the big one stuns you and the other one's in stealth. Oh, you've never heard of that, have you? Oh my god, it's never happened to me. I have not been blessed with this occurrence. I didn't know you could get ambushed by snakes, that sucks. But yeah. Oh, oh I see what you mean, like the nightmares. I was gonna say, like, I, th I thought you meant just normally, you know, like you camp and... Snakes just oh, show no, up because no. you cleared the nightmares. I was like, what? Okay, yeah. All right, I feel like, like we talked about this. Party shuffle ambush, that sort of thing. Yeah. Because you can use this in the front, oddly. Yeah, it's got that going for it. So if you don't want to blind fire, you have this. But, um... Yeah, I feel like I'm getting tangential with this. So I, I want to put this in, like, D. It's not unusable. It's got a couple spots, but, like, it's not... It's not amazing. It's not unusable to be flared by anyone. I love it. Is Tom Jones still alive? I have no idea. I hope Probably. so. We would have heard of it otherwise. True. Alright. Uh, Bounty Hunter is up next here. And... It, he has Wait, some before, crossover. Before we move what? on, I'd, I'd just like to say... Um, over half the Arbalist skills have gone in D or lower, so... Just, just pointing that out when someone says that Arbalus is uh, really flexible. <sighs> I didn't notice it, but now I can't unsee it. 
Uh, yeah, bounty hunting. Uh, go on, continue. <laughs> Alright, um, BH, it seems like he has some overlap at first because you have, uh, like, collect bounty and finish him, but they, they still fill different needs, so. Even though some stuff can feel similar, I think he's still got enough diversity in there that, uh, he has some fun stuff he can do. Well, we all know that, uh, well, actually, no, we'll get to the talking about what makes Bounty Hunter good later on, but yeah, uh, collect bounty is, like, kind of the basic bread and butter attack for him it's got decent range you can hit from rank three to the front two it does bonus damage versus humans which is maybe sometimes relevant i mean extra damage is extra damage and it has a nice healthy plus 90 percent damage versus marked constantly you don't need to level it up for it to scale oh my god red hook did arbalest dirty man yeah and i think this is a pretty solid move it has decent crit yeah, I'd say this is a nice B tier skill. Okay. I mean, I, I agree with you. It is it is quite the, the solid snake move. That that joke's not funny, but yeah. It's, like you said, the consistent damage, crit, um, 1 of 5 accuracy, but that's good enough. The, being able to use it out of 3 is really nice. So BH has some pretty good damage projection. Um... Mark for death, this is one of the, probably the second best mark in the game, because it lowers protection, and it gives them some speed, which can be nice, but uh, yeah, really consistent, hits everything from anywhere, and minus prod is always nice. I like mark for death probably more than I should, just because, I mean, one of the biggest issues with uh, Bounty Hunter is, like, his damage is surprisingly not as good as you'd think it is with how people post pictures. Oh, look at this. I just did a 70 point crit to this dude. But like at max rank, it's eight to 16, which is, which is, it's Average. not that much better than backliner damage, really. Yeah. Like backliner damage is like seven to 14 and he's only one to two better. So ideally I'd like to see him hitting like a, a backliner with his, uh, you know, his strong mark skills, but he, can't unfortunately but the speed however makes him be able to so, something's going to go before him obviously his speed isn't that great but the speed buff and combined with his speed means that something's going to go before him yeah then he marks them and on the next round he hits them before they takes a second turn so it's not like you get much difference between if you went before them constantly yeah it's i mean it, it's got a lot in there for uh to make it useful. I mean, he is a he is a good mark character. He's a good person to set someone else up. So if you're running uh, another bounty hunter, houndmaster, or arbalest, then you know he can he can see some some good use, especially with this. So, um, uh, correct correct me if I'm wrong, but he doesn't have a debuff trinket, does he? Oh, it's a. I don't think he has support for debuff so. because. Yeah. Oh, uh, check the crimson courts and stuff. Now oh, it's none. move skill and bleed and range accuracy. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't have debuffs. Wow. For most of Darkest Dungeon's lifetime, collect I'm um, not collect many. Mark for Death was just a mark. That like that's all it was. It, it was only until like after Houndmaster had come out that they were like, oh crap, we need something to add to make this mark be able to compete with the others. And they gave it stuff, but they didn't add uh, any debuff chance for him. <sighs> a shame. You know, he doesn't have the, the built-in debuff amulet like a certain someone. Yeah, you could you could easily tack it onto like Crime Lord's molars and it would be fine, but Yeah. Alright, so B High or lower? Uh it is definitely either B or C. This is a move that you do consider running whenever you run a bounty hunter. I think I'm gonna give it B. And you're free to object, but the the thing that kind of pushes it in there for me is even if you don't have the mark synergy, everyone appreciates the minus prod because that that, that still helps true. your your other damage dealers. It's true. I mean, that's people run a houndmaster mark just for the minus prod as well. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, if there's nothing else on that. Then it's come hither, which is. 
interesting because it does a little bit of a few things. So you get to pull stuff, hurt stuff, and market, which is a nice alternative if... For instance, they're in rank four and they don't have protection, then you get to pull them where they might be ineffective, and now they're marked. This is this is very effective against backliners that are in that spawn in rank three, because not all yeah. backliners that work in the backlines always spawn in rank four. You can pull a bone courtier from three to one, and he only uses knife in the dark, so you save yourself on a like a whole bunch of stress. And Obviously, this is true with all pulls in the game. You don't necessarily need to kill the unit that gets pulled immediately. Like, sure, you get the mark so you can kill them easily, but you can just leave them there and deal with yeah. the other enemies. I totally agree. I mean, that's... You're effectively removing them from the game, you know? Instead of, like you were saying, getting bombed for, like, 20 stress a hit, now you have this bone dude in rank 1 who's stabbing you for 4 damage. You know, that, that's just as good in a lot of cases. So where does it go then? I mean, it, it's a solid move. I usually have it on. I don't press it every yeah. time, but I usually have it on. Bounty Hunter does have good... Uh, he does have move trinkets as well. He's got, like, the move helmet and uh, some of his Crimson Court. One of those Crimson Courts has, like, move chances as well. The kill list, I think. Yeah, the kill list. Look at that. <clears throat> 50 move skill chance and 50 accuracy, so it's not missing. Yeah. You can pull basically anything that is not straight up immune with that. Yeah, so... Wait, didn't he... Okay, move yeah, move skill... I don't know why it's in a different color. That's what's screwing me up. Okay, so yeah, the... Oh, they, they must be pulling an old, uh, an old red hook, not removing the colors. Yeah, I guess so. But yeah, so you get two movement trinkets, and they're both pretty good. Um, Still feels like it's C to me, but I don't know. Well, I'd say it's C... Merely because it has to compete with uh, Flashbang. We'll get to Flashbang soon. That's a fair point. I, I played so much DD2, I forgot uh, Flashbang and DD1 was insane. Alright. I mean, Flashbang and DD2 can be insane as well. It can be, but it doesn't, it doesn't come out swinging like it does in this game. <laughs> well, um, a move that does come out swinging in Darkest Dungeon 2 and 1 is Uppercut. Nice segue, so, yes. Uppercut. It, it, it's a knockback, it's a stun... It does some damage, I guess. It has decent accuracy. That's all that needs to be said. Stuns in this game are really good. And knocking back a problematic frontliner with, like, as we said, you can use Vengeful Killist or something like this, get it up to 190% base knockback. You can knock back ghouls and bone generals and anything in your way, really. Like, this... <laughs> This is the One Punch Man of Darkest Dungeon. <laughs> also, the other thing I'm thinking about is like uh, Resident Evil Five, and Chris punches the shit out of that boulder. So, <laughs> uh, yes, you can. I, there, there are no living rocks in this game, are there? Oh, there's the <laughs> the Sleepers Herald or whatever. But eh. um, I don't know. There's the statue. Maybe that's maybe that counts. I, I don't think you can knock back the shield. I think it's got two hundred forty. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Never mind. All right, but yeah, this so it was pretty good, and something that kind of jumps out at me too, like how you're saying with come hither, you can yank something from three to one and disable it. You can do the same thing to an extent with uppercut. Like if you uppercut something from two to four, you know it's stunned, and if it's like a a cultist that is using stumble scratch, you know that you're taking it away for like three turns with one move, and that can be really efficient. Yeah. I've got nothing else to add there. That's this. This is an A tier skill. All right, I can get down with that. Okay. Um, flashbang. I mean, it doesn't do damage, but you know, it's so effective at at shutting stuff down. And even though the the shuffle target is random. You know, you can still kind of guide it where you want. Like, if you hit rank 4, it can only go forward and stuff like that, I think. Unless there's some coding where it won't move. Um, yeah, it can only go forward. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, this this move, I it's really good. Good accuracy. Higher than normal stun chance. It's got, like, the plus 10. Um, this is this is a more high-rolly version of Uppercut and Come Hither. Like, it's, it's a weird child of both of these skills at once. Because, yeah... 
you can, in theory, roll high and move a fourth ranker directly to rank one, bypassing, like, just the most dangerous stress dealer en enemy, like, potentially. Uh, it's a ranged skill, so it has an extra vengeful kill list value, combined with the fact that move and shuffle are the same thing in terms of stats-wise. Yeah. And it has higher stun chance than uppercut by 10%, for some reason. Yeah, it's like they're compensating. They went, oh, it does new damage, so let's make the stun more consistent. But, you know, that's how we get stun meta. Ideas like that. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't do damage, of course, but it can be used in the back ranks as well, if you need to. Yeah, I mean, it's at least A. Is it S, though? This is, yeah, I'd say it's A tier. Also, uh, shoutouts to not changing it to a yellow skill for the stun. Oh, yeah. Okay, so... This will come up again with, like, Grey Robber Foot, but for the uh, those unaware, the skills have borders depending on what type of effects they have. So, like, all the heals have green, for instance, and stuns have yellow. And I guess Red Hook considers Flashbang a movement skill, and then they consider Uppercut a stun skill. So we can see here by the borders. Which is odd because Uppercut wasn't always a stun. Oh, what? Is this... I mean, For this is the reason, butcher's. Uppercut was originally. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, did they? Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. This is the butcher's circus version because yeah. in, on the wiki here it's yellow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they they removed the the stun from flashbang. I guess they made a new icon specifically for it. Yeah, it's odd. They can change that one, but they can't change shadow fade, dude. What the heck? All right. Ah, uh, but yeah. So we got finish him. It's pretty similar in terms of it's just a. Uh, like to uh, collect bounty where it's just, you know, I hit something. But um, it's got a little more reach, can hit rank three. And it does bonus damage for stun, which isn't normally too ideal, at least to me. But like, it's nice if it happens. But usually when you stun stuff, you're saying, I'm going to deal with you later, not now. But I guess, you know, there, there are times to attack the stun target. So it, I think it's good just for the reach, personally. Well, to me at least, usually when you're running Bounty Hunter, you're saying, I'm using the Bounty Hunter to stun someone, not I'm using the Bounty Hunter to kill the stunned unit. And Also fair. To, to, to me, the only reason this exists is exactly what I call this move every time. It's Collect Bounty that hits rank 3. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much what it gets relegated to. I mean, it's not... I, I don't feel like it's bad at that job, though, but yeah, it's... The only issue is it's just straight up worse unless you're attacking stun targets. It just has, well, actually, it really only has less crit and no bonus damage versus human, but you run this to hit rank three. Yeah. So does that, I mean, does that make it C? Just, just because it's, you know, slightly less effective in killing stuff? Or is the reach enough to, to justify it? I, I mean, people slot on skills specifically to hit one rank. A lot, like, look at Iron Swan. Yep. But I, I don't think this really does as good work as Iron Swan does. So yeah, I'd say it's just C. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it's so funny, because when you said people slot on stuff specifically to hit a rank, like, Iron Swan is the first thing that popped in my head, so... Yeah, it, it's the best example, for sure. Um, Caltrops... Caltrops, the, I'd say it's the newest skill in the game on a uh, classic hero. This move has been changed so much, and oddly enough, this is kind of good. I mean, sure, it has two debuffs tied to it, and the Bounty Hunter has no debuff support, fortunately, and usually stress-dealing backliners have decent debuff resist, like look at Cultist Witch, or, you know, the, the Hags. The bleed is nice, and if you can stick the plus damage taken, plus damage taken from everything, not just physical damage. Like, that works for dots as well, so yeah. decent synergy. And, yeah, it just hits the back ranks for bleed. It's, other than flagellant, this is really the only move you have that can hit the back ranks with bleed. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, at least rank 4 specifically. It, um, this move... It, it's got a lot going on, but like you said, since there's, you know, a bunch of stuff it has to get through resist-wise, it kind of um, diminishes the effectiveness. Like, if it all goes through, it's it's nice. 
Uh, one of the things I do to kill hags sometimes is I'll put on a bounty hunter and I'll just spam like caltrops and have someone else like, you know, nuke her super hard just because you get the bonus damage and stuff. But um, I don't I don't press this one too much. It's not like a bad move, but it's not a not one I find myself using. I will say if you're going for a putting some debuff skill chance on him to use with a mark, this does get some value. But un unfortunately, yeah, uh, this is his only bleed, and you're not putting a bleed trinket or anything on him for that. Yeah. <clears throat> he does have bonus damage versus bleed, but... It's... Yeah, the CC set. I was, I was double checking to see if um, kill this gave bleed, and it does. So that's... Oh, it does. Yeah. I mean, that's, I must that's funny. Because it it's, it's for one move. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. It's okay. He, if only we had more things that buffed one move. Stairs of Leper. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... What is it? Um, C? Yeah, this D? is probably C. C? Okay. C is I don't think it goes any higher. Because that damage buff, you know... You can put in some solid damage. You can. All right. Um. Let's see. Got Crusader oh, next. Why am I looking at the wiki for it? But yeah, Crusader. Yeah. Ronaldo. We got Smite. Pretty stock damage move. So I would assume it's going like the the other stuffs, so like B or C for the most part. To me, this is the most disappointing basic melee attack. It has no crit modifier base. And it does bonus damage versus unholy, which is not an incredibly frequent type. So yeah, it, it doesn't even have great range. Like people say, like, oh, leper. If you put him in the front, you can only hit the front. And yeah, if you're trying to run smite, then that's the same for him. But uh, fortunately, crusade has better moves than that. Yeah, the more I play crusader, the 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 fewer times I see myself putting Smite on the bar. Like, the, the more time passes, the farther away I get from this move. It's smite, I, I don't think Smite is a very good move. Is it D? It, I, I think it goes C merely off the fact that Crusader has good damage base. That's fair, yeah. He's got that, that 10 to 19, that bruiser damage. Yeah. All right, so we got Zealous. This is a move I, I have a personal distaste for just because it's a range skill. So that means all of your other, you know, melee benefits that you would put on this character, like Warrior's Cap for melee accuracy or, you know, melee damage, if it's out there, like Ancestor's Pen, you know, you're just not getting that, that value as Zealous. Yeah, it is the Crusader's one ranged skill. I have so much wished that Crusader... Like, this was a melee move of some sort. Like, just literally whip the enemy with the scroll for the AoE. <laughs> but, uh, unfortunately, yeah. It, y if you want to build anything around this, you have to stack into ranged trinkets with ranged accuracy and ranged crit. Which, there, there are some good trinkets for that, but you don't want to be doing that with Crusader. So, it, it, kind, of, it kind of pales in comparison to anything else you could be doing with him. Yeah, I mean... I want to drop it in D, but if you got something else, then... Nah, I'd, I'd say throw this thing in D. Alright, we'll give it the D. Stunning Blow. This move is pretty good, just because, like you were talking about before, Crusader hits very hard. So Stunning Blow, in turn, hits kind of freaking hard for, uh, you know, for a stun move. Yeah, 5 to 9 on a stun is... Pretty good damage, Crusader. He has stun support trinkets with him. He's got, like, Paralyzing Crest. And actually, honestly, I think that's one. But it's it, it, it's something. He has support for it. I want to say, he, I think he has one more. Is it the... Yeah, the, oh, yeah, the, the, the hilt. If, if you, you have, have Holy Water. <laughs> yeah. If you're holding and on to that Holy Water. chilling out 200 shards for this thing. Yeah, man, I've... We're not talking about trinkets. <laughs> I mean, we, we can, time. but it's... I, I like the idea of this trinket, but it's just way too expensive. Yeah, the, the elusive Blight Crusader, unfortunately, never saw play. <laughs> Fortunately, Stunning Blow is good enough to use in most comps that you run Crusader in, as long as they're not dance comps. Yeah, so is this... I mean, my gut check is like A. But I don't know it, if it's... It is good, but... 
unfortunately, I think that Crusader's speed being like two, so he can't stun something before that gets a turn. I think it drags it down to B. Okay. Um, I don't know if you've seen this. Have you seen? Uh, of course, it's thick as always. But he stunned thing from the stars with stunning blow because he goes so freaking uh, slow. I, I know how that interaction works. If you stun him very late, then you skip his uh, start of turn crystal attack that never misses, which is yeah probably the best use for Crusader's stun. <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny to see it if you haven't seen it. Um, let's see. Bulwark of Faith. This move is uh disappointing to me. Like it it could have been I don't know, like the scaling on it's not super great. It could have been better. I feel like the one thing I only really use this move for is the 24 free torch. Like this is yeah. press this button for 75 gold. It'll uh, supplement the gold Reynold is stealing from you. Oh my god. I know you can if you were dedicated enough and there was enough combat, you could actually just go into a dungeon with very limited torches and just slam this every fight. But well, that's... Why would you? Convert your crystal shards to powdered dust or whatever it is to add more uses of Bulwark of Faith per battle for the extra torch. Oh my god, the value. <laughs> that's galaxy brain plays right there. It is. Alright, is this, is this D? There a reason to put it anywhere else? Uh, well, the Crusader is kind of tanky, but usually, like, this is Darkest Dungeon 1, where max health doesn't matter, unfortunately. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd probably say it's D. Right. I mean, Crusader has, like, he has one protection trinket, I think, the Glittering Spaulders. Yeah, I think so, unless one of his, like, early ones give it to him, like that, uh, uh Defender Seal. Oh, wow, five. Five prot for three crit. You know, if you reverse them, I probably those stats. I'd probably use it. <laughs> yeah, really though. Uh, All right. Um, battle heal. It it's interesting because you know we talked about our bless going up to like four to five or whatever. Battle heal isn't really that good, at least early. But you know, champion when it's at five to six plus like commander's orders, you can actually turn him into a decent healer. But that's a lot of work. Um. And that's like one one situation, but I mean, I think this heals okay, personally. Well, th this heal is noticeable. This is something probably worth considering <clears throat> slotting in if you, you know, you desperately need, like, another healer, or if you need someone to save you when a cultist low rolls. Then, yeah, it does work. If you're running uh, anything to buff his healing skills, it works aren't much things to really help him that you'd want on Crusader, but yeah, it, it works. I actually find myself running Ancestor's Scroll yeah. as a, one of the trinkets for him, and it works pretty fine for him. Yeah, Ancestor's Scroll is actually probably one of the best if you want to go, like, support, just because he can both heal and stress heal, so it helps both those things. But, yeah. Of course, that is an Ancestral Trinket, so... Yeah, it's you're not gonna find it so late, and you're not gonna have it for very long if you just beat the game and stop. Well, actually, it's a Shambler drop, I'm pretty sure. So you can get it early game, if you're lucky and skillful. Forgot about that. Um, let's see. Okay, so where does it yeah, go? I agree. C? Yeah, I'd say C. Hey. Um, Holy Lance. I, I love this move to death. Yeah, this is, this is the juicy part of the list. This... That, look at that, level 5, fat, 10.5% crit. Yeah, and with that, uh, on, that unholy uh, bonus... On a 10 to 19. Yeah, it, dude, this hits really hard. You can crit a core tier for like 40 with this thing and some like bonus damage. It's uh, You don't need to because you know they, they're made of paper, but it's fun and satisfying. And I... I, I kind of wish it had a little more accuracy, but I, but yeah. I think that may make it a bit overtuned. It it would, but I do agree with you. Like if if this had like five or ten more accuracy, this this would probably be insane. But it's it's good. It's good enough. Like I I like to run back row crusaders specifically just to use this move, you know, and then run stuff like Highwayman to duelist advance past him and stuff like that, or Jester to Dirk Stab, if you want to run a backline like that. 
Um, yeah, I unironically think this is what makes Crusader a better backliner than a frontliner. Since yes, I in agree. In dancing comps, one of the worst things that you can have happen is your turns to be taken in the wrong order. Crusader is the slowest hero, so he's always going to go last. So you can consistently set up like dancing comps for him. Look, look at that three speed at max level. You think the Highwayman is going to go after that? No. Better watch out. There's a snail speeding past him. All right, this this move is good. Is it? I I want to put it in like A. The, I think the yeah, accuracy is, keeps it out of S, but I think this is A tier. You can just put a focus ring on him or something. He doesn't yeah. care about losing too much health from getting hit. He's a crusader. Exactly. All right. Uh, inspiring cry. This is this is a pretty solid move. It does a lot of things. It doesn't give you a ton of each of them, but I mean, it's it's good enough. It's nice. You get some torch. You get some stress healing. Get a little bit of health. I think this is actually a really good move. I think this is more than just, like, solid. Like, 10 Torch is good. It's, like, only, you know, 60... No, 33% of a Torch or something like that. Not much. <laughs> the Stress Healing is decent. 8 Stress at max level doesn't seem like much, but the fact that it can heal a little means that it can crit heal, so it can give more Stress Heal, potentially. That's right. And th those are only small numbers, but they do add up over time. Yeah, if you're and trying to course, stall it, it's slow. <clears throat> you can stall. The the other thing too that I think makes this move really good is the targeting because you can use it from anywhere to hit anything, and that yeah, can be really nice. Versatile. Yeah, I mean, I did kind of undersell it there at the beginning, but I I do kind of want to drop it in S. I don't know if that's too high though. S. Ooh, may maybe this this is a very good move that just does a lot of things and fr quite frequently i do find myself hitting this more often than not if i have like if i'm building crusader with someone else that can be considered a primary damage dealer like a hellion or a leper then sure i'll try and hit this button every single turn it's that good but if i don't have another primary damage dealer i'm hitting holy lance so i i'll let you decide do you want to put this in s or a I'm fine with either. Uh, no. I, I think I'll leave it in A. It's, it's really, 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 really good, but it doesn't break the game. You know? Like, I, I feel like S, S tier skills are probably things that break the game. Like, dodge vapors, you know, at level 5 or 6 or whatever, maxed out with 3 stacks of them, you're, you're kind of breaking the game at that point. But I don't think that Inspiring Cry breaks the game. Yeah, it is good, but probably not game-breaking. And that's Crusader, I guess. It is. I'm going to bite kind of fast. All right. Um, Flageroni. Flagellants. Has, uh, yes. He's gone through some changes. Like, release Flagellant was insane. And he got toned <laughs> down, but he's yeah. still good. I guess the first one so. is Punish. It's a, it's a full damage attack that applies a decently strong dot. I mean, flagellant damage is pretty pretty low, because, you know, he's, he's flagellant. He's 5 to 11 at max rank. That's pitiful. But, yeah, it applies a dot and a debuff that lowers resistance to said dot. It's got decently good crit. It's got relatively high accuracy. What more can you really ask for? This used to hit rank 3, and it got nerfed. That's yeah. how good it was. Yeah, that was that was broken when Flagell could swing into rank three with this. You didn't have to run Reign of Sorrows because of that. But uh yeah. It's it's solid. Um I mean obviously this can be said about uh, like with all Flagell skills, but he has plenty of bleed synergy, so the bleed chance doesn't really matter. He can stick a bleed to most enemies in the game as long as you keep him out of the ruins. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, is this, is it B? It, it's, it's good. It's a pretty much normal melee attack that's balanced around him or his, like, regular damage and stuff. Uh, the other thing, yeah, too. Yeah, it's B. Okay. The other thing, too, though, that jumps out, I forgot about this with Flagell, is, like, his accuracies are really good for, uh, yeah. at least these two. He's got pretty good accuracy all around. But yeah, it is a dot skill, and usually dot skills are weighted towards higher accuracy. <laughs> Slam! <laughs> anyway. Reign of Sorrows is basically that, except it hits the back ranks. 
It does a, a little less crit, it has less damage, but it hits two at once and does like one point less of a dot. That's about it. Yeah, I think it's I think it's still good though. I mean, pairing this with someone like Plague Doctor, you can just melt back lines pretty quickly. Um, yeah, the, uh, the infamous bleed and blight duo makes the back lines flee in terror. Yes. So I mean, I think it's still a B, but I mean, it's it's a good skill. It's some some solid bleed bleed damage, and uh, the one fifteen accuracy is pretty nice. That I mean, maybe that makes it higher, but I, I think it's still B. But the question is, this is important. What's better, Reign of Sorrows or, you know, Basic Punish? Now um, we don't have to actually think about this. <laughs> okay, I was, I, I was wrapping my brain around it for a second. I was like, well, they don't target the same things. But, uh, you know, the damage over time is better against prod enemies, which are normally up front. So maybe, maybe Punish is still better. Commenters, what do you think? But yeah, Exsanguinate. This is the heaviest dot there is in the game at max rank. Like, it gets one point of dot every rank for some reason instead yeah. of like one every two. So it goes up to nine. It has good enough accuracy. It heals the flagellant for 50% of his HP. And the only downside is it debuffs his healing later, and you can only use it when low health. But does it really even this this move in fact was nerfed greatly but it's still overpowered it is and really this is uh if you want some hype moments in darkest dungeon you know you get your flagellant down to death store or something like that then he fires off like a critic sanguinate or something like that and then you know the enemy melts quickly after you heal up for a bunch of hp like it's it's really fun it's it's such a satisfying button to hit and I also feel yeah. like if you, this is one, I think out of all the skills in this game, this is the one that hurts to miss the most. Like you feel so much inner, like soul crushing turmoil when this, you know, whiffs on your target. Yeah, this is, do, do not miss with this skill. You will die mostly, but yeah, this is the most DD2 skill move that is probably existing in DD1. Like it's a percentage heal. And it applies debuffs for healing skills and healing received. And that minus speed is the closest thing we've got really to a daze in this game. Honestly, yeah, it's, it's a good point. This is like DD2 before DD2 was made. So maybe this was their uh, dipping their toes in the water with percentages. Yeah, so. this, this may be an S tier skill just because of how powerful this is. I mean, it has three limit, three uses limit per battle, but usually that's more than enough to kill whatever you're doing, because that's like 27 times 3 bleed damage if you don't crit. Yeah, you don't... You only get 3 shots, but you're not going to need 3 shots unless you're in a farmstead, I guess, but flagellant not too great there. But I can get down with this. I, I want to put oh, some up thing, there. It's a good move. One thing we need to add is you cannot remove the debuff with medicinal herbs. Yes. Just point that out. Yes, so when... When you time this is pretty important. You know, you can you can throw it immediately, but you do have to consider the the following turns. Like, does he need more healing? Can he survive this turn without using it? Stuff like that. Yeah, this the people people bring the blood with them on missions with a non crimson court or crimson curse flagellant just to damage his health enough so he can hit this on round one. <laughs> I mean, that works. You take I forget how much stress you take a lot of stress though too to do that. Yeah, so reclaim. Uh definitely a move that gets better later when you have access to like more bleed resist, but it's it's interesting just because restoration's so powerful. Like how you can not die to a damage over time effect, no matter how high it is, if you have any form of restoration. So that can be really clutch. And you can also pull double duty with it and use it to bleed flagellant down into his low health stuff. But I like this move a lot. I'm I'm like between A or B for it right now. Yeah, there there are two types of people that run this skill. People who try and reduce the flagellant's bleed chance with things like that. The he he has a trinket that reduces his bleed chance and increases his like healing or something like that. What was it? Yeah, one of the hoods. Uh, yeah the 
the Resurrection's Collar, 33% healing skills for 15 bleed skill chance, so he has less chance to bleed himself. And then there's the type of people that increase his bleed skill chance so that he always bleeds himself, so that he can much easier hit his uh, other heals for other people. Like, Shard of Glass increases the chance of you actually dotting yourself by 55%. Yeah, because it applies it applies both with some like reclaim. So it's But yeah, Flagellant's high bleed res base means that this doesn't have a well, there's always a chance of you resisting it. Like sixty five bleed res at level one is like ugh. It's inconsistent unless you build around it kind of. Which can get you in some bad spots, but then again the healing is I mean the flagellant rule rate has really good recovery, as long as he has the HP. Yeah, it's this is just there, like, if you want to do main healer flagell of those when you slap this on, but, you know, it's, otherwise, it still has some good uses, but, uh... Using the back line. Yeah. <laughs> the rare rank 4 flagellant, the suffer value, it's there. It was in front of us the whole time. <laughs> oh my goodness. Alright, but, um... Yeah, what are you feeling for this one? I still personally don't think this move is all that good. I think Flagellant just has so many better moves. Flagellant is a character you want to have like five skills on at once. He oh, really yeah. needs to be in DD2. <laughs> Dude, even in that uh, game you get five move slots, he needs six. It just, it never ends. We'll see you in a Darkest Dungeon 3 where he needs six skills or well, he has six skills and he needs seven. Yeah, and he does burn damage. How wild is that going to be? Holy shit. Now he's going to use the new damage type uh, Frost. Oh god, I don't even want to think about that. Alright. Where are we putting this? C, D, B, unusable? I, I think this is I think this is C tier. I just don't like it that much. I, I know that you just said before, I want to put this in A or B. So like I know that it, it may be hard to listen to me here. <laughs> well, I will honor you because you are the guest. But now, I we do... can go B if you want, like split the difference, as you said. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Redeem. This this move is a. Uh, this is your safer version of Exsanguinate. If you need to heal, but you're afraid of missing, then you press this. But it heals someone else too, which can be nice. And yeah, I, I think this this still counts as a single target heal, even though it's technically a heal more than one unit. So it rolls off of a the single target heal crit RNG. Yeah. So. I it's... mean, yeah, you get a crit heal with this. You heal himself to full health and someone else to, like... I don't know. It, it's a separate crit roll, so it can be, like... More, more than enough. Yeah, I mean, this heals for enough on its own, but if it crits, they're... They're good. They're, they're fine, so... Um... I mean, it's... It's not better than Xang, because it's not, like... You know... It, it's not forward momentum, it doesn't try and end the fight. But it's still pretty powerful. It's not better than one of the best moves in the game. I know, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, this this is a good move. I'd say it, it, this is either A or B. Okay. Um. Do we want to put a fourth flagellant skill in B? I don't think he deserves that, honestly. All right, I'll yeah, put he a. deserves better. He does, because now we're going to get to stuff like... Endure's actually okay. Um, uh, when, it's, when it's leveled up, and you can get some like stress resist and stuff like that, sure, it can do some nice things. Is, uh, you look at level 5, and you think, oh, that's pretty good, and then you sadly look back at what the base is. Yeah, it's, it's not usable to like level 3. I mean, you could use it at level 1, but it's... You gotta have a plan. Like, you gotta... If you're running this at level 1, you have to be on like a medium mission and you can camp off that stress that's like the the safest way to use that otherwise you're looking for the uh the higher level versions yeah thankfully flagellant camping skill really carries this to be yeah. something more than useless i i don't understand why it gives him speed like he doesn't need speed like flagellant speed is like what eight or something like that it's either eight or nine i think but yeah he, he's nine at the top yeah he's he's very far why does he go from six to eight why? Uh, Red Hook. Red Hook. <laughs> I mean, this this is this is just. I'm not trying to say that as like a cop out, but there are just so many things where it just feels like Red Hook was overcompensating or 
just didn't notice like little things like how shield breaker does the same thing she jumps to speed i think at level three can i take this time to just rant about something very minor can we go back to bounty hunter for a second yes sir like, uh, skip over the coldest brawler tab or something like that i want you to take a look at his level three axe art oh yeah <laughs> I, I know what you're talking about like that has been you in the game since early access it has never been changed that was always what his base weapon looked like and it never got updated. I literally asked Chris about this, why it never changed. And his response was, I liked the art. Oh yeah, Chris liked that that's one art out of the, the thousands of arts that he made. Yeah, he, he, he just likes it and that's why it's never been changed. But yeah, that's... I thought you were going to talk about the level 4 axe, how it like changes to a new shape and then changes back. <laughs> it would make sense probably if there was a proper level 3 axe. But... <laughs> that's fair. Because it almost looks like it's going that way, because you have like a, you know, kind of a hatchet, then a, you know, a colorized hatchet, and then you have, like, the level 4 axe looks like the level 2, like some kind of continuation of that. Like, these two should be flipped, is what it the feels like. The stick doesn't even line up. Ah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I'm gonna stop looking at this. <laughs> yeah, back, back, uh, back to, back to Flagellant. Anyway, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, indoor. indoor. It's, uh, it's, it's probably... D? It's C? probably C tier, because yeah, it is a stress that. heal, and stress healing yeah. is good in this game. And as we were saying, I'm gonna just for the those unaware, Flagellant can just knock off fifty of his stress during camp, so that's what makes yeah, it. Yeah, if you usable. if you carry around like a, you know, you can use ancestral scroll or ancestor scroll on him, and that'll heal turn more. that to like yeah. a a sixty two stress heal. Yeah, that's that's a little bit. It's it's pretty good. Or you could uh, use it and hit Lash's Anger, which no one ever does. Oh, yeah. Buffs him to that sweet, sweet stress. Yeah. All right, then we come to Suffer, which... Uh. <sighs> this... <laughs> Size in unison. I know, dude. It... Okay, so what I was saying... Actually, what I was trying to get at before, which is... You know, when you asked about the speed, why Endure gives plus speed. That, that's what I was trying to get at when I was saying, like, Red Hook just... It feels like sometimes they do things to compensate... So it feels like Endure gets speed to compensate because they're like, well, this this stress doesn't feel, you know, like a, an appealing exchange. You know, you're still like at the, the highest level, you're positive eight in terms of healing. Like, that's OK, but people probably don't like seeing that. So what can we do? We can give it speed. And it kind of feels like the same thing went with Endure because this is just like a mismatch, like, mis I don't know, hodgepodge, whatever stupid term you want to use for it. But this just feels like. Like a, a bunch of just stats vomited into a skill just to make it all like stick together. So you have like, you mark yourself, you clear the mark, you transfer bleed and blight, you get stress resist. Like, okay, all oh, that's pretty cool. Let's give him some death blow too. Like, why not? You know, just this move does a lot of things, but I just never find myself this, pressing it. This is like when you buy like five bootleg game consoles off Wish.com and none of them are very good. And it's like, oh, but I got them for the same price as a PlayStation 3. Yeah, but none of them are very good. Like, I can see the theming. You mark him so that he gets lower health. He gets hit more so he can use his good moves. He heals effectively your teammates by giving the bleed and blight from them to him. He gets stress resist so that he can use endure to take less stress himself. And the death blood resist is just something he wants, but... Death blow resist doesn't matter on the flagellant because the death blow resist cap exists. And well, there's no minus death blow on hit from <laughs> Yeah, from effects. Whatever. Well what I was gonna say too is death blow resist is also a myth. So it doesn't matter. Oh yeah, it's true, it doesn't exist. Zero constantly. Yeah. But I mean jokes aside, what uh what were you thinking about for the, the death blow skills? Is that because I know one of the mod classes has, I think it's um Hexer, but I don't I don't remember if you mess with mods or not. I haven't played with too many mods. I've only really played with bad mods and uh, Dark OS. Okay, and I, I got it wrong. I think it's Veiled, not Hexer, but it's in Black Reliquary. But that's besides the point. So Suffer, is it unusable? Um, Yeah, I'd say this is an unusable skill. It's just if you want to get rid of or mend dots on an ally, just use Reclaim. Yeah, fair. I mean, you don't die to dots with restoration so reclaim just does it way better well 
I mean, I guess it saves you or whatever. I'm unless I'm you're rambling. being bitten by a crab, then uh, reclaims better. Yes. Yes. True. All right. Ooh, coming to my favorite character though, Audrey, who unironically has some really trash ass buttons, dude. That is true. Oh my <laughs> god, I forgot they made a pick to the face a negative damage mod. Yeah, I don't. I don't know why getting past armor with seven to fourteen damage isn't that much of a a feat that you have to hit for like you know one or two less damage. I mean, her damage is already low. It's backline damage, seven to fourteen. Making it like 6 to 12 is... Uh, she does have high crit, but... Oddly enough, Pick to the Face doesn't have a high crit. It's, oh, yeah, what the it, heck? it's one base crit. That's so low. I don't know, I, I want to drop it and see. I mean, it gets past armor, which is nice. And it's got some decent reach, at least where she can use it from, but like that's that's about it. I would say it would be good against the Pounder, but they I forgot they reworked that and gave it a minus damage received buff. Yeah. Instead of having 80% prot. Um, what's it good for? It's good for the... I'm, I'm, the, the snails in the cove, I guess. But then snails, again, big crabs, prot. ghouls, um, butcher pigs, they, they get up to like 33 prot. Uh, pretty Ooh, much any frontline true. tanky unit. Like it, has, but, it has some good targets. Yeah, but it's good against the frontline, but usually Grave Robber wants to be hitting the back, right, back line. True. Yeah, see, I'd say. Okay. You put it on in case your heroes die and you can't do anything else. Dude, see, that's what I'm saying! Alright, people... Dude, okay. People, like, get get on my <laughs> ass about that in comments and Discord and stuff. And it's like, sometimes that happens. I have seen screenshots where people wipe to Shambler and they go, Well, I can't kill it because I can stay in Shadow Fade and stuff, but I can't... I can't use my, uh... My other attacks, because I didn't put on pick to the face. And the other thing too, I know we're not through Grave Robber's moves, but like, what other move, what fourth move is more important that you want to run that isn't already covered by something else that's better than pick? Like, are you running Toxin Trickery? No. No, you're not. The woman who runs pick to the face is a fool every day except one day, and that one day is the most important one. True. All right. <laughs> That's my that's my rant for the stream or the the video. Um, is there anything else with pick? <clears throat> Not really. It has, it has good accuracy, I guess. Okay. Ninety. Let me come to. I would say your best attack, lunge. Yeah, cause... I'll let you take this one entirely because it's your favorite skill. <laughs> um. Well, I don't want to put it in like S. It's it's not good enough for that. But I mean like B or A. It's. It's really loaded in terms of the the damage and stuff. Like, the accuracy is pretty good. It gets this flat damage mod the whole time, which is really nice. It's got really nice crit, too. And its specific goal is to gank whatever's in, like, rank 3. So if there's a Cultist Witch or, like, Pelagic Shaman, this thing has a really good chance of one-tapping them, especially if you have, like, some gear. Like a Letter Opener or maybe a Quirk or something like that. Or, I mean, Dismas Head can get it done. So it's it's pretty powerful. The bonus damage against Blight doesn't really come into play too often unless you have someone else dropping it for her, but this isn't usually something to play around. But um, yeah, if you set up a dance team where she can lunge repeatedly, then this puts out a lot of damage. Or if you want a Shadow Fade and then lunge, it, it works too. But I, I do love this move. Um, with that said, even though it's got all this bonus damage, she does not have great base damage. So this doesn't... Uh, so it doesn't do as much as it could, but I mean, it hits hard enough to kill something when it crits. And so because of that, since she's really fast, she can go before rank 3 pops off. I think that's... I think it's at least B. I mean, for her, for her it's S. But, I mean, as, a, as an actual skill, it's like B, maybe A. I will say that uh, one of my more fun but wacky comps was having a Plague Doctor in rank 4 with the Prophet's Eye, which gives speed, accuracy, oh, yeah? and stress resist, so that she can hit Play Grenade and hit the back 2, and then Grave Robber goes from 3 to the front and attacks rank 3, and it does, you know, it actually gets that extra damage versus Blighted for uh, actually considerable damage, so rank 3 just dies, and she's still fast enough to outspeed him usually, so yeah. that's all I can really add, because uh, 
I, I know that I have... I'm a veteran in terms of knowledge on heroes. I am not a veteran on using Grave Robber. That's your department. <laughs> uh, I do. If, I do like this hero. If you want to put this in A, I won't contest because it does have some good damage. It is her play around, you know, build around move. Okay. I mean, I I will never shy away from promoting Grave Robber propaganda, so I will happily put it up there. Uh, let's see. Flashing. Now we went from a good move to a not good move. Look at that crit mod. <laughs> I, w I wasn't looking when you said that because I was checking my uh, I was checking something else. But then, yeah, I forgot that it was negative. That's garbage. Not only is it negative, it's negative five at level one. I I may be wrong on this, but that may be the lowest crit modifier on an AOE move that hits two units. Might be. I mean, we'll we can keep an eye out the further we go. I mean, maybe maybe breakthrough will surprise us. Now uh, breakthrough hits three doesn't count. Oh, okay, you said hits two. Uh, also, probably has high crit modifier anyway. <laughs> it might. So, yeah, this this move is just a weird inclusion because you know hitting two things that's fine, and this is kind of another. I I don't know. Like I'm always looking for this. I guess so. It might be bias, but like. This just feels like another example of Red Hook when, you know, this move needs something else. Let's give it Bleed Resist, like Bleed Resist debuff. She doesn't have a bleed skill. Eh, it's for someone else. So, you can, you know, spam Flashing Daggers with Harvest, I guess, because everyone's doing that. Yeah, this this move did not have Bleed Resist until... Actually, I don't even remember when it got minus Bleed Resist. It could have been very, free, very recently in terms of a development cycle. But yeah, this move just screams, use Harvest with this. Because, really, it doesn't do anything else. Yeah. I mean, it has a decently high damage modifier for an AoE, but at the same time, it's Grave Robber damage. Yeah, you're hitting for, uh, Cupcakes unit, like, minus 33, so... It's... It's not, it's not unusable, for sure, but it, it is not great. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I want to drop it in D... Well, the question is, like, you can say this about any uh, Grave Robber skill. Are you willing to waste the Shadow Fade buff on this skill? Um... We're just going to bleed over into Shadow Fade right now. I've, I've done it. I have Shadow Fade flashing before. Like, I've, I've tried to use Shadow Fade for everything. Um... Yeah, you've tried, but have you succeeded? It, it's one of those things where... If you if you lean hard enough into it, it can perform, but I don't like using that as a justification personally because you can say that about anything. You know, it's like if you get all the right quirks and the right buffs and have the right team, then this one thing can do really well. It's like sure, you know, your flashing daggers can hit for sixty damage if you get four moonshine barrels and you know have all these other buffs, but you're not doing that every time. So how does it perform normally? Not that good. Yeah. I mean, is it unusable? Nah, it's not unusable. It does right. finish off low health opponents, maybe, if you're lucky. Yeah, it's like its best use. You ping something that has like 4 HP and kill it, and then you hit something else. Alright then. Yeah, Shadow Fade. <laughs> Shadow Fade? This, this move is... uh. One of the few, I shouldn't say one of the few examples, but this move's a really good example of, um, like, a buff where normally in this game you want to, at least how I approach it, is you want to be really proactive, so you always want to be trying to kill stuff. And this is you spending a turn buffing and not killing anything, but the damage buff and the benefits that it has, I feel like kind of almost make up for it in terms of, you know, spending that turn. So I think it's pretty good for that. Outside of the things like repositioning and stealthing yourself so you're protected. I think the proper way to think about this skill is it has a 100% damage modifier. So you are not actually losing any damage by using this skill. You are moving yourself backwards and backloading your damage to the next turn. And having... This is basically just plus 8 crit for a turn, essentially, and it fixes your positioning and gives you a bit of dodge. And I think this is the only way to actually gain stealth on your own heroes. 
if I recall correctly. You might be. I mean, I, I think you're right, because I don't think anyone else has stealth base game besides her. And this is the only way she can get it, so... It's got that going for it. It's the only stealth move. Outside yeah, all of, like, I can think of is, Embrace. All I can think of is Butcher's Circus, yeah, where the only other ways to get stealth is Stygian Embrace, and that's a, an occult skill that didn't exist in base game. Exactly. And uh, Get Down, which does not do that in this game, or in the base game. Yeah. So how yeah. how good is it? I mean, is it is it A? Is it B? I mean, there there are situations where it is literally the best uh, best button to press, and those situations don't they're, they're not rare. Like if you're lunging, obviously you press this and lunge just kills something usually. So maybe B. B? Yeah. Maybe I, has I can get down that. Of abilities. Yeah, it, it's a great move. Just uh. Like you were saying, sometimes it's the best move. Sometimes, sometimes you might not want to press it. But I, I will say it gets points in my regard because it is like the only, well, one of the only moves in the game that has specifically caused them to change the AI of a monster just because of this. And that Hell is, yeah. you would run one grave robber against the shrieker, and you would shadow fade every turn until the fight ends because the shrieker wouldn't hit you because you were stealthed. They had to yes. specifically change the Shrieker's AI to be able to target stealth in order to accommodate for this one skill. Man, let Audrey break the game, okay? She needs her time. Sorry, <sighs> we need to feed the leper more. Clearly, dude. Holy crap. Leper is, in fact, the protagonist. Uh, Throne Dagger. This move is... This move is alright. I mean, if you don't want to run darts... Because the discrepancy between darts and Throne Dagger isn't as big in this game as it is in DD2, I feel like. So, yeah, it's 50% um, damage for uh, half a crit and five accurate. Well, well, it's 50% damage and half a crit for five accuracy and a dot. Because honestly, you're not running this for the uh, plus five accuracy. No, I mean, it's... There, there are sometimes it's like kind of helpful but that it's really so so rare that it's not even worth playing around like you should be accuracy capping as best you can anyway so you don't you don't need this buff to do that yeah grave robber has lucky talisman if you want uh, accuracy that's a really good trinket yeah things things good let's go look at it it's like 10 accuracy yeah, yeah 10 accuracy 12 dodge. range 12 dodge very good trinket so this, I mean, this is solid. I want to put in like, uh, let's see, maybe B just because it hits rank four. I mean, yeah, two, it, two of these usually kill like a courtier. It's basically a bog standard uh, range skill. It, ha it has good crit. I'll give it that. Like, yeah, eight crit on a range skill base to like 12 max. It's pretty good. Okay, then we got poison darts. This is... Pretty much, I don't usually run these two together. I mean, people do, but I usually don't. Um, just really depends on what the team's doing. But I mean, darts, darts are still pretty good. Uh, it's It's got reach, it's got a good crit mod, and it blights for four rounds. And so that means when it crits, it blights for, I think, six? Yeah, six. Yeah, and that's, that's pretty good. My biggest gripe with this move is the fact that I wish it was just a stronger blight and not a higher rounds blight. And just, you know what? Another thing I'll say, Grave Robber does not actually have great blight synergy. Like, if we look at her trinkets, she has... Like, let's take a look. She's got a bonus damage versus blighted common trinket, which doesn't matter. The blighting satchel is nice, but it removes dodge, which is her primary survivability. It's not a bunch of dodge, but it's something. And... She has uh, Absinthe in the uh, Crimson Court, which has a whole bunch of Blight skill chance, but that doesn't apply accuracy, and you always want a little bit of accuracy. But the biggest thing that I hate so much is this top shelf tonic. This could have been fantastic, 50% extra Blight duration, but it doesn't give Blight chance, so you have to either pick an accuracy trinket or a plus Blight skill chance, and she doesn't have her own district that gives her Blight chance, so... Man, Abomination got broken key. Can she get, like, broken glass, like broken wine glass or something to give her, you know, 15 accuracy and 20 blight chance? Please, Red that Hook! Would, that would make her probably, like, 
maybe one of my favorite dot classes. I mean, Top Shelf Tonic gives 15 dodge, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's... If, this, if it were Blight Chance, it would be a top-tier trinket. But no, it's duration. Usually, mm -hmm. enemies don't stay alive that long to get full advantage out of six rounds of Blight. Unless you're fighting, like, a boss that has three turns. Yeah, I mean, those situations do exist, but they're not, they're not enough to... To really hang your hat on or whatever. And also shout outs to Absinthe for being like worse hags ladle. Thanks, Red Hook. Very yeah. cool. No, no, it's okay because they get the Crimson Court set bonus if you're oh, running true. melee skills as well. I know. I, that's, that's one of my biggest gripes with the CC sets is like they try and cover so much. And it's like, yeah, I can run both of them. But then, you know, I'm, I'm kind of good at this thing or I'm a little good at a few things. But then... I'm always missing something like accuracy, which is. Hey, you know what hero this would be good on this set? Darkest Pete. Dungeon to uh, Flagellant. Yeah, honestly, yeah, it'd be very. Oh my god, it would be. Holy crap! Be very good on him. All right, so poison darts. Uh, I want to say like C, maybe, maybe. Yeah. It, yeah. Okay. It, it's fine, but uh, it could be better. Yeah. the The issue is like. In terms of damage, you know, Throne Dagger can kind of compete with it. And then if you need to get past armor, you have Pick to the Face. So you don't have to uh, necessarily, you know, rely on darts for that. I mean, it, it does both if you need to accomplish both goals. But yeah, less, yeah. less trinket support. It, it, yeah, it could miss unless you invest a trinket into it. But then again, you're investing a trinket into one skill. Yeah. Uh, and then we come to... Toxin. I hate this move. This is a very confusing move because, like, it's a battle long buff that cures dots. Like, obviously, you want to hit this at the start of the battle to get the dodge and speed, but then what the hell is the point of curing Blight and Bleed? You're going to be like, no one's gone before Grave Robber. Are, are you going to say that some fluke, like, she gets dazed from Darkest Dungeon to male? And, like, the crab pinches her because she's in rank 2 or something like that. And you're like, oh, hey, now I can cure this 50-point bleed. Yeah, shouts Genius. to crabs. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not good. I mean, Absinthe in uh, DD2 actually does this better. You know, you get actual healing, and then you still get the dodge and speed and stuff like that. But just the fact that it's healing instead of dot cure, that makes it, you know, a bit better. Um... I, I can't put this in unusable. I mean, I could, actually. I really don't like this move, but... that That is a nice bit of dodge for an entire battle, so if you want to run... You know, Grave Robber with Anti and stuff like that, then you get a bunch of extra dodge, just to make yourself that much safer. Yeah, man, if only she had Repartee. I know, right? Jeez. <laughs> yeah, this is... This is close to unusable, but I would say it's a D. Alright. It's not as bad as Suffer. <laughs> We're all suffering for that one. Um, yeah, flagellant can't steal your dots when you kill them yourself with toxin trickery. <laughs> yeah. All right, I, I kind of want to cut this one here. It's getting a bit right. late on my end, but we can reconvene. I appreciate you hanging yeah, you out. You want to give an outro, or do you want to? You're just gonna not cut it normally. All right, and that's gonna wrap up part one for. The skills tier list. I want to thank Spartan for hanging out. We're definitely going to come back and try and finish this. Looks like it's going to be three videos, most likely. But uh, hope you're enjoying it. Hope you're enjoying the analysis and the banter. And Spartan, you got anything to say? Anything you're working on? Promoting? Charity? Well, uh, I'm, no, I'm too broke to do charity right now. Uh, I'm doing a playthrough of Darkest Dungeon 2 on my channel. You can probably find that in the description if Shuffle remembers to put it there. He should. He should. But uh, yeah, I really enjoy being here. Uh, thank you for having me for now. And yeah. yeah. No worries. I mean, I had you here, but this was your idea. So thanks for the Rude. content. It came to me in a dream. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we'll reconvene. We'll see the rest of it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. I guess we will. Goodbye.